HVAC 360 is brought to you today by Carnival Cravings Corporation, who reminds us that it's almost carnival season again, folks. And if you have your eyes set on something new, look no further than the incredible edible fun over at Wind Tunnel Funnel Cakes. Who can stomach those old, moldy novelties of years past, like deep-fried Oreos or double deep-fried cheese curds, unless we forget the granddaddy of them all, the deep-fried and battered stick of butter on a stick. Now, with Wind Tunnel Funnel Cakes, you can watch your creation come to life as the funnel cake mixture cooks in midair as it flies down our patent-pending deep-fried infrared cooking tunnel. You can even hold your own plate, folks. When's it done, you ask? Why, when the cloud of pow powdered sugar explodes from the assembly chamber. Eat and enjoy. <laughs> Welcome back, Matt Nelson here, your host for HVAC 360, helping you be the best and the brightest in the field of HVAC. I do that by either sharing information, specific lessons learned from the field, or talking with industry experts. If you haven't done so already, I want to encourage you to double down on your weekly helping of HVAC knowledge by hopping on over to HVAC360.com and joining my growing community of people just like you. Sign up for that newsletter. So what's up for this week? This week, we're going to be talking with Dennis Mueller, who is the engineering manager for HVAC Systems in North America, and Mike Clement, who is the test engineering supervisor. They are both with Modine Manufacturing. Uh, Modine has a test facility up in Racine, Wisconsin, and that's what we're going to be talking about. Where is Racine, Wisconsin? Uh, it is north of Chicago, but south of Milwaukee, along the shores of beautiful Lake Michigan. There, I even threw in some geography for you. No extra charge. All right, enough chit-chat. Let's cut to the tape. Today, we're talking with Dennis Mueller, who is the engineering manager for HVAC systems in North America, and Mike Clement, who is a testing engineer super, engineering supervisor. Uh, they're both with Modine Manufacturing. How are you doing today, guys? Good. How are you doing, Matt? Excellent. Um, a little bit under the weather, but we'll, we'll get past that. Um, so tell the listeners a little bit about um, Modine. I mean, they may not necessarily be familiar with it. Um, but wh how would you describe Modine to most people? Yeah, so Modine is a diversified global leader in thermal management technology and solutions. And uh, basically what that means is, is we have three segments, three main segments. One is vehicular, which is, is pretty self-explanatory. Those are your, your radiators and uh, charged air coolers for both on-highway, off-highway commercial vehicle applications. And then we have a commercial and industrial solutions segment, which is uh, basically coils like uh, evaporators, condensers, uh, water coils that would maybe go inside a larger uh, HVAC unit. And then we have the, the building and HVAC division, which uh, Dennis works for. He'll highlight in more detail the uh, units that they're responsible for. But uh, in general, we are about a $2.2 billion sales last year company on a, on a global scale. Yeah, and, and to kind of expand on Mike's, Mike's point on uh, uh, the building HVAC segment is, uh, is kind of my uh, bread and butter. So, um, you know, for, for those who don't know um, from a Modine product kind of offering standpoint, so um, we have kind of a variety of different, different product offerings within, within our building HVAC group. Um, so we're probably most notable um, when people, people see Modine from an HVAC standpoint is uh, the uni heaters. Um, so we make gas-fired hydronic and electronic or electric uh, uni heaters, uh, duct furnaces, package makeup air units in both indirect and direct fired configurations. Uh, we do single pack package vertical units um, along with um, unit ventilators and cassette units. Um, a lot of it's specifically kind of driven after the, uh, the school um, markets. Um, we also do uh, data center, um, and we have data center-focused products, um, chillers, computer room, air conditioning, air handling equipment. Um, and then kind of in our, as Mike highlighted in our industrial, uh, commercial industrial solutions, we also do dry coolers, and uh, we are the uh, global leader in, in coil production. Right. And, you know, and, and 
as long as I've been in the industry, I don't think I knew as much about Modine as I possibly could. When I started researching and doing a little background uh, for this interview, I, I realized that you know it's one of these companies that is much, much larger than I typically see on a particular project. Um, like I said, you, you, you mentioned unit heaters and, and that thing, and that's kind of in line with what I've, I've, you know, seen on projects that I've dealt with. But, you know, when you t talk about, uh, you know, obviously, um, you know, different, different automotive and engines and, and things like that and, and coils, especially, uh, and then you'd also talk about HVAC that usually doesn't go together. So it's a, it's a kind of a, a large sprawling company, which kind of, uh, I guess, surprised me a little bit. Yeah, and you know, from our standpoint, I think the 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 key that pulls all those kind of divisions together is really the the thermal part of it, and and thermal innovation is you know anything that's heat transfer related essentially is is kind of fits within our our core competencies. So now we're talking about your testing lab uh, today, and how how common are testing labs? I mean, just I you know, it's probably not something that that all the the listeners would would typically think about. But testing labs, you know, I guess, what purpose do they serve and, and what, you know, how common are they? So, you know, like from a commonality standpoint, you know, I, I say the, you know, as we get in a little bit further, the, the scale of our, our test facilities, I would say, if you look at um, a lot of, you know, what we would, we would consider our competition, we don't see it um, as, as much from a capability standpoint in the labs. Um, We've uh, we've we've been the beneficiary of of having many different um, thermal testing capabilities that have ranged, you know, from automotive to uh, HVAC and and some similarities between those two methods. Um, but I would say most of the manufacturers of you know similar size to us, um, a lot of them are utilizing third party agencies, um, which you know the third party agency labs from a from a scale and sizing, um, you know, have similar similar capabilities, but. Uh, generally, I would say the you know the large large OEMs um, we see those um, companies with with similar capabilities and and really capabilities to to test their their full line of products. But I mean, ultimately, as we've gone into this, it's it's our our general goal is to to any testing that we're doing is is really to try and hit kind of ninety to ninety five percent of the test methods that we do and be able to do them in our own labs here. So, so what is, I mean, what is the advantage of, of doing it in-house versus out-of-house, in your opinion? Um, so I would say um, the, the, the key advantage for us is um, basically speed of, uh, speed and quality, essentially, um, of, of getting our product developed. Um, so if we look at, you know, from a priority standpoint, we owning essentially the schedules of the labs and, and in, in my, um, my role, um, working with essentially Mike and his team, um, we, we can work together on, you know, what our priority is as opposed to if we are going outside to a, a third party lab, um, you know, what their priorities are and what the schedules are. Um, I mean, typically we, we are, we, we underestimate the amount of time. I think that, that things take uh, quite a bit of time. So it, uh, owning, owning our own priorities is, is a key to kind of getting things done sooner rather than later. Um, you know, the, the other advantage from our standpoint is, um, is just the, I guess the quality, um, that we can do. So, uh, you know, ultimately we can, we can test well beyond the individual test standards. So, you know, if I look at, you know, things like our rooftop units where we're testing to HRI 920 and 340, 360, um, and really across all our product lines, we have the, our standard rating points. Um, and, you know, pretty much everyone in the industry tests to those standard rating points. Uh, but with our test facilities, um, it's the ability to test well, well beyond the test or the standard test rating points. So, you know, we can basically test as to, if a customer is installing a unit, say in in Yellowknife, um, and it's it's going to be seen negative forty degrees F, uh, we can we can test to those conditions. Um, how does a rooftop unit uh, function at one hundred and twenty five degrees uh, with a solar load on it? Those are those are things that we don't see even in third party labs. Um, and having the ability here to do that 
uh, plus even run at sometimes, you know, basically 24 seven for conditions, I think gives us is a huge advantage um, to basically make sure that when our products go out the door um, and go out to the customers, that we've done everything in our power to, to basically figure out, you know, what conditions are going to be seen and to, to test the, test those conditions out to make sure that the unit's going to perform like we, we expect it to. Now, I guess the question that I'd, I'd come up with is that, you know, if Modine's focus was solely on HVAC, if there was, it, was, it was radically different than it is today, um, would they have built a facility like this? I mean, does it really necessitate uh, a facility like this? So I guess I would say from my standpoint is, you know, the, the, the heritage of our company is, is built on kind of the, the basis of testing our products and vetting our products properly. Um, from when our founder, A.B. Modine, installed the uh, and, and basically produced the first unit heater um, that we made in, in 1918, um, testing has been kind of a part of, of everything that we do. Um, I would say, you know, if we look at our labs, um, you know, the, the, the one lab, our, our 520 ton um, climatic wind tunnel, the scope of that lab probably may not, uh, may be a little bit of overkill for what we would be doing for HVAC products. Um, that particular lab, we can do um, basically simulate pretty much any condition on Earth other than maybe maybe snow um, and rain. So, well, but even no, we, we don't. We try not to do it on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> we've had it snow. But we in, can, the, in the wind tunnel, we can <laughs> make it. We can make it snow yeah. if we r- really try. Yeah. Um, so the scope of that laboratory is probably kind of outside, but you know, I think everything else that we've done um, as we've gone forward is is. You know, whether it be um, the automotive group or the off-highway testing or the HVAC testing is, you know, most likely what we would have done um, no matter what. However, you know, having our kind of uh, um, ability to leverage, you know, some of the test methods on the automotive side and off-highway has really, really helped us as we've been creating these labs. Um, And actually, some of them... You know, we've, we did a lot over the last probably 10 years um, between Mike and I is really retrofitting the labs that we have that were typically set up for more of the automotive uh, heavy duty truck off highway testing um, to basically complement so that we could, we could do that testing uh, along with rooftop testing, um, split, split type, uh, single package vertical unit testing, um, all that kind of stuff all in one, um, one lab. Now, and you also do uh, third-party testing for other people. You 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 bring uh, testing in. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, I'm actually the main contact for that. So, not not for every piece of equipment we have, because some of them are um, booked twenty four seven. Especially Dennis's group, we 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 don't typically book out those rooms just because we are constantly testing our our own product. But yeah, we do we do rent out um, testing to other people, and I guess the, the you know part of the point is that this is a certified lab, and I you know I'm not you know I couldn't I couldn't say whether or not um, other manufacturers if they had you know quote unquote lab uh, spaces where they do you know test their products, but I mean this is a certified lab uh, certified by a third party, correct? The the building HVAC is uh, we're certified as a satellite lab for uh, ETL. So okay. we, we, whenever we have to submit data to them, we can do it here. Um, they come once a year and audit our facility. Uh, in the pilot program, when we started off, we did some round robin testing where we, we tested some of our units here. And, and then we went there with our unit and tested it there just to make sure we're all getting the same results or if they're different, understanding why and discussing, you know, basically when, when you get different results from different test labs, usually in the setup, somewhere not so much in the instruments i'd say okay so now let's get to the question how big is the lab and where is it located yeah so we're in uh racine wisconsin um our facility here is a uh, hundred and five thousand square feet um so it's, it's quite big because we have a lot of different testing um the largest of the facilities is that climatic vehicular wind tunnel uh, we could fit a full-size coach bus in there uh, cement trucks and small stuff. Right now we have motorcycles in there actually testing. 
Um, so it's a pretty big facility. And then um, where we're testing our uh, HVAC equipment right now, we have a large 90-ton room for the rooftop units. It, it used to be a salt chamber for the vehicles, but we've repurposed it to do these rooftop units. So that's that's when Dennis said it could go down to negative 40. It could also go up to 140 degrees because it was, it was meant for vehicles. So we can go beyond probably the, the scope of what people normally would look at. And then the other uh, rooms where we test our, our single package units, that actually used to be uh, a dyno, an engine dyno. And we, we just weren't really using it because most companies keep their engines in house. There's a lot of proprietary software. So it would take a large crew to come here and kind of man that test. So we repurposed that room to do those units. And again, that one is tied to a similar system where you can go down to negative 40 up to 140. So there, there's times where we go, you know, off scope of some of these standard tests and the, the engineers up here will ask us, Hey, we want to see what our, our heat pump does. If we, turn the temperature down to negative 20 and say, yeah, sure. No problem. We could, we could take a look at, you know, what happens. Um, kind of a rare thing, but it's, it, they ask from time to time. Um, outside of that, we have a lot of calorimeters where we test the cores. We have single phase calorimeters where you're, you're testing your glycols and your oil to air or, or liquid to liquid. And then we have the two phase calorimeters where we test the 410A evaporators and condensers and 134A and uh, now the one, two, three, four YF as well. And we have pressure cycle rigs, thermal cycle rigs. We have vibration tables. Um, Dennis's group in the building HVAC, they, they've used the, the high frequency vibration tables to look at how we package our units for shipping. So as they bounce down the road to the end customer, do they, do they make it there as they should? You know, so they, they use that lab too a little bit. We have, we have, chemical labs here, things like that. So that, that's our Racine facility. I won't, I won't highlight the capability of other global facilities, but we do have other facilities in the UK and, and in Germany and some testing in India and in Brazil as well. Yeah. And I will say the, uh, so our, our UK facility is, is also, it's, it's really UK is, uh, and it, it, it basically goes under the, uh, the Airedale, um, is the, the, basically the name of the company over there. It's a subsidiary of, uh, Modine, but, um, their focus is really, is really data center products. Um, so they're, I mean, I think some of the, the key ones as far as their chambers there is we can do, uh, we have a 560 ton, um, uh, chiller psychometric chamber, um, hundred and then 140 ton and a 70 ton, uh, psych rooms for, um, computer room, air conditioning and air handling units and, and smaller chillers as well. Um, and then, you know, like some of the other global ones we talked about, but on the HVAC side, um, our calorimeters in uh, Grenada, Mississippi and, uh, Pontifico, Italy as well, um, also offer some, some pretty good, uh, single phase, um, properties or, um, uh, abilities to, to test in the calorimeters. And, um, some of those, uh, particularly the Grenada lab is also, uh, third party certified, um, to, to do their, their test methods. So when you talk about the the tonnage of a room, what does what does that mean? Uh, tons of refrigeration. So that, for example, the large wind tunnel has a, a five hundred and twenty twenty ton chiller that services that room. So we can we can take quite a bit of heat out of there. That that's how we get down to, to negative twenty and our handle large heat loads. And then uh, for the rooftop unit. We can handle up to to ninety tons, so that the heat coming off of the the unit, the condensers, the compressors, you know, electronics, that kind of thing. Okay, so it really doesn't. Have, I was I was just making sure. I'm like, does, does is that related to what you're putting in the room, or you know, the capacity of the room, or it's or it's actually yeah. the yeah, yeah. It's 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 the rating of the the room itself, kind of what's on the the other side, but it's pretty close to what it can handle. So now when we're talking about uh, standard test conditions, I mean, obviously you, you, we've talked about negative 40 to 140 degrees. What, what are some standard, um, if you were to go to, to uh, uh, any sort of standard test methods, what are the temperatures that they're requiring? Um, so I guess, you know, like we, depending on product to product, it's kind of, you know, slightly all over the, over the map, but like we, we start out with, 
like the air conditioning products. Um, so like our rooftop units, um, you know, most people, when, when you talk rooftop, a lot of people know, you know, EER, IER, which is all governed by AHR, AHRI 34360, which we do test into that. And, and that one basically sees, you know, the highest temperatures um, from a rating point standpoint at 95 degrees F and then, you know, an 80, 80 degree um, dry bulb and 67 degree wet bulb return air. Um, so we do some of that, that testing um, along with they do a 115 degree ambient kind of um, hot startup um, type type condition. Um, uh, our rooftop, uh, our line of uh, rooftops, uh, the Ethereum is was really um, kind of built from the ground up to be more of a high percentage outdoor air to 100 percent outdoor air unit, which um, that standard is HRI 920. Um, Similar, similar conditions on the outdoor side. Um, however, you know, much higher um, uh, humidity loads in, in that standard um, that we, we test to. Um, but, you know, again, for those examples, so, you know, say 115 is usually the high ambient on, on those. Uh, we generally take it, take it up to 120 or 125 um, to make sure that we have, you know, the factor of safety. Uh, for those those areas like you know Phoenix and Las Vegas that that see some of those those extremely high high temperatures on certain times of the year, um, you know on on our our heater heating products, um, you know really the 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 conditions for for heating and testing heating for efficiency and things like that are are pretty they're pretty minor. You know most most heating equipment is is generally tested at kind of a room temperature you know sixty to seventy degree. Um, but, you know, particularly as uh, we make uh, high efficiency um, condensing furnaces um, for outdoor equipment for our rooftop units, um, those we do a lot of testing in the kind of negative 30, um, negative 40 degree three point to look at uh, how those systems run in the extreme cold, cold environments. And that they have, um, for example, for, for the dedicated outdoor air system, when it has 100% outside air coming coming across um, our, our heat exchangers to make sure that they function correctly when you need them to at, at those extremely um, cold temperatures. Um, so those, those have been some of the benefits that we've seen from the ability, and, and as Mike kind of talked through the, the tonnage of the rooms, is having the capacity to be able to pull down to those extremely cold temperatures um, along with, I mean, the, the battle you get with, with some of those extreme cold temperatures is just the ability to not ice the room up and to handle, you know, and pump in the dry air so that you can actually run, run those conditions without freezing up your, your heat exchanger that, that controls those rooms. Excellent. So Mike, I got to ask you, what's, what's the coolest testing chamber you got at your, uh, at your facility? I would say based on, you know, the, the public comments as people come through here, it's, it's that wind tunnel. Um, it's it's very large. There's not very many of them around in the North American region, maybe four or five. So that's when we, we do like a lot of high school tours for people in the area and tours of customers and, and other folks coming through here. And that's usually what everybody wants to see is, is the wind tunnel. Because um, just, just due to the size, it's about four stories all put together. I mean, the building's really built kind of around it. So how do you get on one yeah. of those tours? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you 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 could contact us. It's, it's we're not really open to the public, so I mean, it would be for like vendors or customers, things like that. Uh, you know, we've had the Ashray Group come in here, SAE Group. So um, I would say just just contact us first, and and we can look at you know who who it is and and what our availability is, and, and see if we could put something together. Yeah, particularly, you know, from, from our standpoint is, is our customers, um, you know, and we, we do it fairly often is as we bring our, our customers and our reps in for, for training sessions here on site. Um, I mean, that's, that's a key, key part of, of what we do is, is make sure we spend the time to take them through, um, our test facilities and test labs. So, you know, any of our, our, you know, potential, uh, customers looking at, at Modine equipment out there is, is, you know, the best way for them is really to, to kind of reach out to their, their rep or their, their salesperson um, and, and schedule, you know, kind of an on-site visit. And, and to kind of expand on, on Mike's side on the, the wind tunnel number two or the climatic chamber, um, you know, 
the coolness of it from from a, a HVAC standpoint and development standpoint from from my group standpoint is just the ability for us to do. And we talked about kind of the extreme temperature testing, but um, that particular tunnel has a, um, a full solar spectrum solar simulator, so we can simulate 95% of the sun's UV spectrum. Um, so we can do testing basically at the 120 um, degrees with a full solar load on the, the unit. Uh, you know, from a from a, a performance standpoint, usually not um, super beneficial for us. But when as we look at cooling our electronics um, enclosures. Um, our electrical cabinets, things like that, and the load that uh, the solar puts on it, it is um, it was absolutely um, huge for us as we were developing um, our rooftop units uh, to get our arms around as to to how how it would be affected in the middle of a, the Phoenix desert. The other thing we can do on there that that in that tunnel is um, we also have a radiant heating floor. So essentially, you can you can simulate the radiant heat that would be coming off of a hot rubber roof onto our condenser section. Um, so it, it, it's kind of amazing just the capabilities along with, you know, some of the wind testing and things like that, that we're able to do. Uh, we can basically run testing up to 150 miles per hour um, in that chamber and do wind testing on our units. Um, so capabilities as I highlighted before that we probably would not have had, ever had or put in place. Um, just building, you know, rooftop units and, and HVAC equipment. So after running all these tests, you know, have, have there been results that have su- kind of surprised people? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it's amazing because, you, you know, you, you go into it and you have the ideal of, of what you think is going to come out and, Sometimes, you know, you're, you're not quite there. I mean, you, I'd say most of the time we're pretty close, but it's the ones that when you're, when you're not close at all, and, and then because these machines are, are quite large, you know, like the, the big rooftop unit has two separate refrigerant loops inside of it, you know, and then figuring out you're not getting capacity and trying to find it between all the different valves and expansion valves and all, you know, there's, there's just so much ground to cover. So, yeah, you, you, we find weird things from, from time to time. Yeah, and I think the, the key from, from my group standpoint is, you know, um, there's, there's a lot of greats to having all this test equipment at your, your abilities and at your finger, fingertips. But, you know, I, I have to push my, my group as well to make sure that we're going into it, you know, doing our simulations at a time so that we know what we're expecting. I mean, I, I think my standpoint our ideal state at some point in time is is that we we essentially don't have to do any testing because you know we've either we've either developed our, our simulation tools ahead of time um that we feel comfortable that when we put our design together that you know there's we know exactly how it's going to perform so in the end the test is really just a final validation of all the engine engineering work we did up front um, but as Mike said, we know that that does not, um, yeah, yeah. you know, what we, what we put in our, our, our models and our simulation models, um, sometimes does not always, um, translate to what we see, see in test and, and kind of finding the balance between that is sometimes always the, the, the tough thing to do. So what is the, the strangest thing you've ever tested? Um, actually a, a, a person. <laughs> we we had a uh, uh, guy from the local news come here, a weather weather guy come down here, and they uh, have at the uh, baseball park in Miller Park in Milwaukee. They do uh, a series for the kids about weather, and one of the things they wanted to show them was how strong the wind could be. So they they called us up and they scheduled some time in the wind tunnel, and we made you know like a little fake person out of out of wood and, and hung it in there and we we blew air at it so they could see video of it kind of flapping in the wind and then uh the two of the weather personnel went in there we we put you know full gear on them and helmets and all that kind of stuff and they they stood in the wind they wanted to see how how much wind they could take standing up and i, I think the the smaller person got up to maybe just shy of 90 miles an hour so that that was kind of a strange one. Um, yeah, I think I think my my favorite 
I mean, one uh, of interest and, and maybe not that strange, but uh, we did uh, rain, rain ingestion testing. So prior to, to me having the role kind of in the HVAC side, I was, I was actually in, in Mike's, Mike's position um, prior about, um, so we had did rain testing um, for a motorcycle manufacturer and it was, uh, it was two, two guys wearing basically a Tyvek rain suit that they could weigh before and after um, go in the wind tunnel. We ran, we ran rain, kind of rain ingestion to see how wet people would get in, in rainstorms. And we had, we had basically run calibrations on, okay, here's a, here's a light rain. How wet do you get riding a motorcycle in a light rain? How wet do you get in a, in a soaking rain? Um, so that was it's pretty interesting to see, you know, like two people huddled on a motorcycle in a, in a wind tunnel, you know, basically yeah. shooting water at them. Spraying water on them. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's that's I mean that's 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 fascinating stuff. I mean, really, how how else are you going to truly test, uh, you know, clothing like that? You can say all you want, but until you actually get it in in that sort of simulation, you really you really don't know. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And that's that's the beauty of of testing in these facilities is that it's a controlled environment, so you can be consistent. And and as Dennis's group comes and makes changes to their their units then at least we know we take the baseline, we can make the change and, and we know we're at 95 degrees again, where, you know, if someone's trying to do that outside, you're, you're at the mercy of mother nature. So Monday's 95 and maybe the next day's 96 and a half. And, you know, as funny as that small change sounds, it does, it does make a difference. Right. So l- let me ask you this, you know, I mean, obviously, um, yeah, you know, we're talking about different things that that we could we could test. Any sort of, I mean, keeping it completely anonymous. Is there anything that you can share with us about you know any sort of testing process that that went wrong? Yeah, yeah, we have uh, we had in our our old wind tunnel. So our, our original wind tunnel, smaller, it's still there. It was built in in 1941, and uh, in that tunnel, we were testing a, a vehicle that had been instrumented by by others and in the middle of the test we had a, a an incident a thermal we'll call it a thermal event where most of that tunnel was was lost so uh we have since rebuilt it um that was back in in 2006 i'd say De- dennis was actually in my position at that that time so i wasn't here for it yeah but that that would i'd say that was the biggest one that went wrong yeah so at, in an in interesting one so at the time i had i had two responsibilities i had we had the two wind tunnels and and essentially i had I had two wind tunnels and those are my, my sole responsibility. And in, in one day I had, oh, I was down to, uh, I was back down to one, one responsibility because the other one was, was, uh, pretty well, pretty well out of commission. But, uh, yeah. uh, the, the nice thing, I guess, from, from, from the ashes of, of that event is, uh, um, we had, we had a lot of upgrades planned in, in that wind tunnel. And, um, you know, I was, I was basically able to do them all in one, one year right, as opposed yeah. to, yeah. over over five years but um, we've had our share i think of, of yeah. we've been lucky i think you know when you particularly i think when we test class a trucks and things like that you're you're basically strapping down a you know up to 600 horsepower vehicle and you're running at full load for an infinite amount of time so um you know those the guys the technicians downstairs are are you know sometimes it seems like that nerves of steel because yeah it's a lot of responsibility um as you know, on the testing size with the, the technicians, just, you know, the size of, and even on the HVAC size, size of units, the types of tests we're doing. And a lot of electricity, yeah. high power. I mean, of, of course, for us, safety is, is number one. And you, when you're doing testing, you're, you're taking things oftentimes beyond the limit of what they were really uh, built or designed for to begin with. So we, we have to be very aware of what we're doing. So, you know that that one was a yeah obviously a total loss, but those kind of things they they're very they're very rare. We don't we don't see that very often. Excellent. So I guess is there anything that we haven't covered? Any last thoughts that you'd like to share with our audience? Um, no. I mean, I'll just highlight once again that you know we are open for business. So you know, people that are listening and they're hearing things we can do if, if they're more interested in it um if you go to modine.com um i believe it's under it says uh products and then underneath there it says uh testing 
and you go to that, then that's all of our, our testing capabilities. There's a brochure on there. And it even has uh, how to contact us. Basically, it directly goes to me. There's a line at my desk or the emails go to me. So if, if anybody's ever interested in either coming here just to view it or they want to do some business, um, go ahead and, and check that out and, and get in contact with us. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, all our, all our capabilities are, are out there in, in PDF form as well to, to take a look at, you know, more depth on kind of the labs. Um, so if anyone is, you know, whether you have tests or not, or if you're interested in, in just, you know, learning more, I mean, Modine.com has a, a lot of good information. And as you go into the, the tech center, um, there's a whole um, document in there that basically goes through the, the you know, detailed specs on sizing and, and some of the tonnage stuff we talked about and, and just overall test methods and capabilities there. So a lot of, a lot of good information there. Um, and, you know, the one thing I think I wanted to just highlight, you know, is, is you know, our test labs, you know, I, I would put them up again against, um, you know, you know, pretty much anyone out there as, as far as our capabilities. Um, you know, I think the key though is, is having all the test labs kind of across scattered across the, the globe. Um, a lot of it is, is, is the knowledge sharing that we have as well, um, is what helps set us apart. I mean, I've seen a lot of companies, um, as they've grown and expand is, as you can tell that there's just no, you know, collaboration between, between groups and, and labs. And, you know, so having, having all these capabilities scattered throughout the world is, is great. But, um, I think from our standpoint is, is we're constantly sharing knowledge, um, across our facilities, whether it be, um, you know, in, in Europe, in the UK, um, here in North America between our different groups. So, um, sharing between our, our automotive segments, our building HVAC segments, our commercial industrial segments, um, is a huge, huge part of, of what we do. So, you know, just learning from each other and the different industries we serve has been, um, I think a key to, you know, as we, we push forward and, and really our tagline being, you know, from thermal innovation standpoint, um, it, it's how we, how we continue to move, move the company forward. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. It was a, uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. All right. Thanks again to Dennis and Mike for taking the time to chat with me. Uh, check out the show notes page for links and other things that were mentioned during the interview, uh, including that wind tunnel test. Uh, you can find the show notes over at HVAC360.com slash 147. That's it for this week. Thanks so much for listening. I hope this was helpful. If you know somebody who's looking to step up their HVAC game, uh, consider sharing this episode or another one of your favorites with them. This is by far the best thing that you can do to spread the word about this podcast. For those who want extra credit, uh, there's three extra simple things you could do. If you're not a subscriber, again, go over to the and join my growing community people just like you over at HVAC360.com for more weekly goodness. Uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just search up HVAC360. And lastly, would be greatly honored if you would consider leaving me a rating or review on Apple Podcasts. Well, that's a wrap for this week and this episode of HVAC 360. I'm Matt Nelson, helping you be the best and the brightest in the field of HVAC. And as always, know what you build and share what you know. Thank <laughs> you.